Uh, we can see that uh, it is you know, really getting tight and we can see that chasing group, they're really you know, all pushing on as well, except for Rex, maybe he's at the end of his powers at this point. But you know, this is very technical, uh, this run in. And uh, yeah, 3.8 3 to go, 13 seconds. Yeah, it looks like if they continue on as they have been working front, they should be able to hold on. But they can see them out there, they're just at the end of the straight. Just over three and a half kilometres to go. Looking at a fight for the stage win. 12 seconds now. 37 seconds back to this group that initially we were looking at really once the others went away. Just the chase for the stage win, but there's been increased significance now on what this group is doing. Because the man at the back here, the blue rain jacket, could tomorrow be wearing pink. Now, get, there's a lot of you tuning into the Giro d'Italia for the first time, maybe following Gerard Thomas's progress. I'm wondering why the leading team would want to give it away, but Geraint Thomas might be able to save himself an hour or so of press conferences tonight. He did allude to it last evening in the interview, saying that Roglic would be happy at the minute because he was only two seconds back and he was getting an extra hour or two recovery every night. Maybe only be one evening with a big stage to come tomorrow, but there might be a chance to get your feet up a little earlier and pass the jersey for one or two days to Bruno Armirail. Yes, and will they be allowed? Because it's such a, mm. a tight one here. It's only, you know, that 15 seconds uh, hovering at the moment and the other teams will be made aware of that. So just up the pace a little bit without taking any risk on the straights. You can push on, slow down the corners and just pick it up again. So this will be an interesting one. If we could see the peloton, what's happening back there. Is it in your are still allowed to control and will they be allowed to do it all the way to the finish? Yeah, you wonder what Jumbo Visma are doing. Two point three kilometers to go, they're in the same finish straight. Or the same straight rather. Finish straight's two point two Ks up the road. This is tense and tight, isn't it? This is like the other day here, except the difference is it's not a full peloton chasing on. Think back to Naples, but they can't start to look around. They're going to have to go for it to the line and give themselves the chance. That will suit certainly these two men here. Oldani and Ballerini, we both know, are very fast finishers, even in a big bunch group. Scrooge is no slouch, but he's up against two riders who have been sprinting for a living as well as hunting stages. Derek G wants a bit more commitment still, and the gap's at 14 seconds. They have to keep committing. One and a half kilometers to go now. And there is a rise to the finish line once they take a turn, just coming up now to the right hand side. They won't actually see the finish straight until around 200 meters to go. They'll, of course, see the numbers come up. This is the right turn coming up at the end here. Chasing group can see them ahead. They still look, they still work, they still commit. Hoping, praying that those at the front start to mess about. Here we go. Fasten your seat belts, fasten your shoes. Time for a three-up sprint with a threat of those coming back behind. Right-hand turn and they're about to go under the Fiamarossa, the Flamme Rouge, one kilometer remaining. In the red, Tom Squinch. In the navy blue, Stefan Oldani, the only man out of these three to have won a Giro stage in the past. And in the blue and white, Davide Ballerini riding for a three-man band, Sudal Quickstep, who only have three riders left in the race. Two riders from Lombardy, and look at Oldani, he's trying to launch it early on, and Oldani does go as Ballerini's looking down. He was looking away, Oldani takes it on early, and there he is, Stefan Oldani, when the other two were sleeping. Has he got enough? Behind, you can see that Squinge proves he hasn't. Straight on, and Ballerini waits. But behind, there's the green and black of Nico Denz. Derek G's on his wheel. Will it be his moment? There's still a gap between the two, as the first attack didn't come home. Now, has Oldani spent all of his power? Over four and a half hours in the saddle. It could be coming from three to eight, and it looks like they might come together. Remember, it's uphill this, and they haven't seen the finish yet. There's Betiol now trying to take his chance as it comes back together. It's eight going for the stage here out of nowhere. Meyerhofer is out of gas and out the game. Denzer's on the wheel of Betiol, who's trying to get some revenge on what he considers to be a shocking race for him so far. But look at Denz, it's been a dream race for him. He's out the front, looking to make it two up. Denz, the big German, goes again. Again. Here's G trying to get around though. Derek G to the line. Derek G. Oh, I don't know. Arms up from Nico Denz. 
Derek G came out on the right hand side. Was it his moment or was it another second place? It's a photo finish from the eight at the front. One of the strangest sprints I have ever seen in my life. And here is the group led by Bruno Almirail, who'll be hoping to take the Maglia Rosa. As I said before, he has to do his bit. Almirail hoping to hang on, needs to come in with this group. And then we start the clock. Remember, 4.37.30, plus 18 minutes, 37 seconds, plus another 53. We are hearing from live timing that they think it's Nico Denz who's doubled up. We wait for the photo finish. Denz has his hand up, but that was mightily close because G came right to the line as Denz was celebrating, but look at that. You win one, you often win two. And Nico Denz believing, fighting, bringing back the group himself and then winning the sprint. Yes, well, what a final there. And, uh, you know, the way they came back, they just kept on riding behind that group. And, uh, you know, Denz looking, he was going to win pretty comfortably, but G came again really strong in the end. And Denz, of course, he put up his hands there. Looked like that uh, yeah, G was coming over, but we are hearing that Dents just about held on, but how tight, how close was that? Derek G, Maya Ciclamino, maybe the challenge, the fight might be starting here. He was asked about it today, but Nico Dens has picked up the big points. Nico Dens has taken it two wins. Bora Hansgrohe feeling good about things before we get to the big GC battles. Almirai across the line with 53 seconds of a delay. So we'll do the maths in a minute. It's 18 minutes, 37 seconds. That's another 53. Away from Simon Clark. He's given his all today. And Israel Premier Tech with another second. Three second places now for Derek G. When he gets in a break, he goes all the way. Here we go again. Half a wheel in the end. 